This is an iPad 4 with a damaged home button and speaker connector. So as you can see, these do not react well to heat. You cannot remove and, re well, you basically can't replace them by heating with hot air from the top because as you'll see shortly, they pretty much disintegrate. So it's a little different than a lot of the connectors that we work with. You're not going to be able to get this off in one piece if you use direct heat on it. And what happened here is someone had removed the home button connector and found that in the process, of course, the speaker connector gets melted. So we'll go ahead and get rid of this old one first of all. And this point, you know, at this point, I'm not really worried about damaging this. We just want to get it off the board. So as we heat this area up, and you can see I've got it taped off with metallic foil and that will prevent some of the hot air from blasting the other components in that area so we should be able to get this up to temperature without causing any collateral damage. So as I mentioned you can see the plastic is just going to fall apart you know before we even get to the point where we can get this thing heated off so just go ahead and clear this out make sure you get those two posts those are a little stubborn and then we'll put some flux down and remove all of the factory solder that's attached to these pads. Now I still like to add some leaded solder. This will bring the melting point down and it just kind of makes things easier when it comes to cleaning these areas up. And then of course when we install the new components we will also be using leaded solder because it doesn't require quite as high of a temperature in order to melt and that just pretty much makes our lives easier. And of course you want to be sure not to breathe these fumes in the process. Work in a well ventilated area or have some sort of fume extraction system in place. But beyond that, it's just so much easier to work with it. The consensus seems to be that if you're not using leaded solder, you're probably working a lot harder than you need to. Now, I'm going to speed the video up in a few places here so you don't have to be bored with any of the details that really aren't important. I am going to clean this off so we can get a nice, smooth surface. And you'll notice that third pad from the left is a little stubborn. There's a tiny bit of factory solder still stuck to that, but that will not be a problem for us. I'll go back and hit that real quick, the, quick with the iron and get as much of that off as possible. All right, so once we've got the area cleaned up, we are going to put some new flux down here. And what you'll find, as I mentioned earlier, is that approaching this from the top side of the board is not going to work out very well. So we're only going to do this in order to add some leaded solder onto these pads. And once we get these tinned, we'll go ahead and flip the board over and use the hot air on the opposite side. And I like to get these to lay down pretty smooth that way. When we place the connector on top of it, it doesn't have kind of an uneven positioning because that makes it a little trickier. Of course, when we get this thing up to temperature, everything's going to liquefy. But the smoother you have these to start with, I believe the easier your task will be in order to get them attached. And you will notice that a couple of these take a little more heat because they are connected to the ground plane inside of the PCB. So they kind of suck the heat away as you're trying to warm things up. All right, so if we take a look at this from the backside, you'll notice that there are some components. They're not directly beneath the area that we're going to be working on. But we do want to protect these from heat and we also want to prevent them from shifting around should this solder get a little too warm. So in order to protect against that, I usually add a layer of capped on tape and or another layer of that reflective foil on top. So you can probably get away with just the metallic tape. You don't necessarily need the capped on, but whatever works best for you is fine as long as everything stays in place and it doesn't fall off while you're working on this area. Okay, so you can see I've got this wrapped around there and stuck down so that it will not shift. And what we're going to do now is flip the board back over and we'll start to apply heat from underneath. And if you keep an eye on this area, you should be able to see when the solder gets close to melting temperature. It, in my opinion, makes it a little easier because as soon as these things liquefy, that's when you want to place the part down. And if you're lucky and you have a steady hand, you might nail it on the first try. You'll find out here shortly that I was off by just a hair, so I did have to go back 
and adjust it, but for the most part it's pretty straightforward as far as the installation goes. If you look at that bottom right hand corner you can see and then the left also those two anchors melted and when they did I placed this down but I did not end up getting it exactly where I wanted it. It was originally in the right place and I slid it back a little further than it needed to be. So we'll have to go back and readjust that otherwise it's going to be difficult to add solder to those pins on the back side. Now we do want it to sit down flush with the board so you can see that one of the advantages here from heating the opposite side is that you actually can put some pressure on this plastic and it won't leave an indentation the way that it normally would if you were applying the heat directly from the top. Right, so that is sitting down flat, but once again, it is out of position by just a hair. So what we're going to do is turn the heat back on, and I'm actually just going to slide it a little closer to the edge of the board. That way, and hopefully from this angle, you can see that exposes those pads on the back side that, so that when we go back, we can apply additional solder if we decide that that's necessary. Right, so from here, I'm going to come in with my tweezers, and again, I did reposition the board. We'll add a little fresh flux and we're just going to go in and flow solder thoroughly through these joints so that we have a good connection. We won't have to worry about this cracking or popping off the board later on. And unfortunately, part of this got off camera, but you'll be able to see uh, here in a second how I'm just kind of working my way across this. And I'll make sure that those get heated up sufficiently so that the solder kind of floods up onto the pin itself. And I'll show you a little later on. I got a good shot of this so you can see what those joints look like. Now you can test for continuity to make sure everything's connected. I think it's highly unlikely that you'll end up bridging anything because these are so far apart. But if you want to play it safe, you can always go in and make sure that none of these pins are connected to um, another one on either side. Right, so that's looking good. We'll go ahead and clean up this area and then we will move on to the next step. Right, so it is time to put our home button connector down. So once again, I will apply some flux on the clean surface, but we're going to apply this from the top. I'm going to use a different technique. You could actually put this on by applying the heat from the bottom. The only thing is, you have a few more components in the area underneath where this is located, so I really prefer not to hit that with direct heat because that can make our lives much more complicated. So I'm just going to pretty much repeat the beginning process here where we flow solder onto all of these pads, get them nice and smooth and even. And, uh, you know, if you have to work out a while to make sure that they look good, you might have to add some additional flux if that burns off. But for the most part, it's very similar to the same thing that we did with the speaker connector. Now, once I set this down, we want to get it positioned somewhat close to where it's going to end up. And that, of course, is a little tricky. But once we do, if you just come in with your iron and you tack down one or two of these pins, that should hold things pretty close to where you need them to be. And from there, uh, as you can see, I have the gate of this connector open. And what I'm going to do is position my tweezers on top of the area right by where I'm applying this or installing it so that I can put some downwards pressure. I'm not going to put a lot of pressure, but I want this to sit right up against the logic board. And as we melt that solder, we should be able to get this to go down right against the PCB so that we have a nice factory fit for this thing. And of course, just make sure that you flowed solder all the way through and underneath onto these connections. And this will be the easy part. If you flip it around, once again, I've missed part of the repair here because I went off camera, but you'll see shortly that I do come down to the bottom and uh, with the tweezers it makes the process a little easier because you can bring in heat from both sides instead of taking a single tip and trying to get it down inside that small crevice and um, you know generate enough heat so that the solder flows smoothly. So I did go back to touch these up a little bit. I didn't love the way that they looked so you can always just keep working on this until everything is nice and evenly flowed in. And if you like, you can also, of course, take your multimeter and make sure that everything is connected to what it's supposed to be making contact with. 
So we'll go ahead and clean this up, and here is a close-up shot I was talking about. You can see that second pin from the top did take a little more solder than the others, but this will be sufficient for sound, and now we will test it and make sure that we have a home button and a speaker. And as you can as you can hear, our speaker is working, and if we hit the home button cable, we do go back to the home screen. So that is pretty much it for this one. If you found the video helpful, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and check out our weekly Tech Talk live stream. Have a great one, and thanks for watching.